pandemic called capitalist corporate greed. Yeah. People eagerly find fault with capitalism. If capitalism works, if this is the best we got, why does it seem to give such a raw deal? A raw deal? Is that what we get? I hear that from people now working for Joe Biden. Do I look like a radical socialist? Not especially, but with so many upset about America's wealth disparities. <laughs> time to take a closer look at the socialism these people want. This is class war! We are committed to transforming our society into one based on freedom, equality, and solidarity. The belief that socialism will bring that is why it's now as popular as capitalism among young people. Another big reason is, oddly, this 90-year-old, linguist Noam Chomsky. Students study his work in class, and colleges pay him up to $30,000 to speak. Thanks very much. Yet for generations, Chomsky misled students by calling capitalism a grotesque catastrophe. I thought the fall of Soviet communism would put an end to such nonsense. Surely everyone would now see the catastrophe is socialism. But no, socialism has come back strong. So in this video and the next, we'll bust five myths about socialism. The first is the claim that that wasn't real socialism. The Soviet Union, this was about as remote from socialism as you can imagine. It's absurd to say that the Soviet Union was remote from socialism. Economist Ben Powell reminds us that when the Soviets made private business illegal, that's about as close as the world ever saw to the pure socialist end of the spectrum. But whenever socialism fails, people always say that wasn't real socialism. It doesn't prove anything about socialism in other countries. Working people have to be in control of production. The Soviet Union is the exact opposite of that. Working people had no control over anything. But that's the problem. That is what socialism inevitably delivers. Socialism means abolishing private property in the major things that go into production and replacing it with some form of collective ownership. In practice, this means state ownership and control. And the Soviet Union had an abundance of that. Of course, the Soviet Union is now gone, so some say. There is no true socialist country that exists today. But there is. Look at Venezuela. Just eating is a luxury. When I say socialism created hardship there, people trash me on my own social media. Read a book. Venezuela is not socialist. Think a bit. I'll do better than that. I'll listen to the politician who wrecked Venezuela. El capitalismo es el reino de la injusticia. Because capitalism is tyranny, Hugo Chavez said his government must take over businesses. Y este edificio? Es un edificio que tiene comercio privado de joyería. Expropiese. Expropiese. That's socialism. The socialists turned the richest country in Latin America, the nation with the biggest oil reserves in the world, into the poorest country. But it's not clear that that crisis has anything to do with their socialist policies. That's myth too. Venezuela's failure has... Little to do with socialism and a lot to do with poor governance. Some of Chavez's programs could have been sustainable if he pursued a sound economic policy. <laughs> yeah, some of his policies could be sustainable if he had a sound economic policy called capitalism. Why does it have to be capitalism? Oliver is saying if he just managed it, better. It's a story about epic mismanagement. Or here's how Al Jazeera puts it. Economic policies have failed to adjust to reality. That's the nature of socialism is for their economic policies to fail to adjust to reality. Because economic reality is evolving every day. It's millions of decentralized entrepreneurs and consumers who are making fine-tuning adjustments to this. In our capitalist society, when COVID hit, what did we start seeing? Millions of entrepreneurs adjusting without government orders of how to deliver their products and services. Servers have switched roles to delivery drivers while bartenders have turned into sales reps. Restaurants installed the heat lamps, expanded patios, did delivery. All the reporters complained about the absence of federal direction. No central authority could possibly direct all these individual adjustments in thousands of different places. In fact, federal direction would have prevented all that. In a market economy, the great thing is everybody's little adjustments gets tested and we get to see what works. Blockbuster was great, but then people were offered something better. TV shows and movies at your command. By contrast, 
In a socialist economy, you get a one-size-fits-all adjustment, and you miss out on this learning process where some entrepreneurs copy others when they see things successful, and they stop doing it when it's not. For example, East Germany's socialist planners pushed these Trabants. Bequem für vier Erwachsene. They said the cars were great. Wendig. Schnell. But it was a terrible car. Hard to drive. And it spewed pollution. Even when West Germans were building Volkswagens, BMWs, and Porsche, East Germans were stuck with Trabants. In a socialist economy, every one of the minor adjustments needs to be commanded. One mind who has to know all of those teeny adjustments, communicate it down and get everybody to do the right thing. That's impossible. No government department can manage millions of individual decisions in prices. When they try, shortages occur and money loses value. If you work the whole month, you can buy one hamburger. Here's another excuse for Venezuela's failure. Oil prices plummeted in 2014, and Maduro failed to adjust. Vox made this video called The Collapse of Venezuela Explained. In the whole video, they never mentioned socialism once. They blame falling oil prices. The oil price is a complete distraction. There's plenty of countries around the world that depend on oil revenue. When oil prices went down, the people there didn't start losing weight. That just happened in Venezuela. Finally, some people respond to my videos by saying, people in Venezuela and Cuba struggle not because of socialism, but because of our sanctions and embargo. They certainly don't help the people, but it's an afterthought as a reason for their suffering. In Cuba, they drive around 1950s U.S. cars, but we don't have a blockade on them. There's no U.S. Navy destroyers preventing Kia, Fiat, or whoever else around the world from sending them cars. The reason for their suffering is they have an economic system that can't deliver. In our next video, more myths about socialism, like progressives claim that democratic socialism is different. The key word for them, democratic. Democratic socialism is your kid's public school. Thank <laughs> you.